What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be tying this cool crawfish pattern that I came up with. It's really realistic and it works very well. So to tie this, I'm using a 1 8 ounce jig head with a size 2 hook. I've powder painted it black and done some splotches of chartreuse to give it a cool marbled look. For the thread, I'm going to be using UTC Ultra Thread 70 denier in black. You could use 140 denier if you don't want to worry about the thread snapping since we're going to be tying things down a little tighter on this one, but I like to keep the bulk down where I can. So we're just going to take that thread down to the end of the hook shank. For the antenna, we're going to be using Silly Legs. This is barred pumpkin green orange. Makes a really nice antenna. So I'm just going to take a piece of that, tie it down right on top of the hook. And we're going to tie those legs up to the head. There we go. Then bring our thread back down. And just make sure those antenna sit right on top of the hook like this. One on each side. And we'll leave that for later. Okay, now we're going to create a cone of hackle. And I'm using a grizzly chartreuse hackle feather for this. This is a rooster saddle hackle. So we're just going to tie that in right there where the antenna are. Clip the stem about halfway up the shank. And then we're going to start winding our hackle. Just make sure we get our thread out of the way. We want to wrap it so that the fibers point backward a little. They cut sort of backwards like this. And we're just going to do like six or seven turns of this, just get a nice thick layer of hackle. Just make sure each turn is pressed against the last. Maybe do a little more, like ten or so turns. Then we can bring our thread back down to the end of that and tie our hackle feather. Just give it a few nice tight wraps so that it doesn't come loose. And then we can cut that. And now we're going to pull these hackle fibers back and create a cone like I said. So we're just going to wrap our thread over those fibers. Just make sure you keep them all back and then you can wrap over them like this. Sorry it's a little fuzzy on the camera. And as you can see it, it sort of makes a cone of hackle. For the claws we're going to use barred rabbit strips. These are olive. So to prepare these to be claws, this is what it's going to look like. So we're just going to have about an inch of material for the claw. Uh, we want to measure it out with the one we prepared already. Just make sure those line up. And then you can pull the fibers back so that it has the same amount as the other claw. Just like that. Then we're just going to clip those with our scissors. Just clip all those fibers off. If you try to pull them off the strip, it will it will pull the hide and stretch it out and you don't want that, so just cut it as close as you can with the scissors. And as you can see, we have two nice claws that are even, so we're just going to line those up on either side of the hook, give them a really loose wrap so that we can orient them how we want them, and once you got them where you want them, you can tie it down tighter. Just continually pinch the hide of those claws and bring it up and then we want to clip those so that the hide goes right about to the head by the time we're done tying it down just like that and we're gonna tie that down nice and tight and we can bring our thread back down as we tie it down tight And if you need to, you can adjust those claws so that they sit right on the sides. And if it's done right, it looks really nice. Now we're going to add another cone of hackle behind the claws. So we're just going to grab our grizzly chartreuse rooster saddle hackle feather again. Tie it down the same way, nice and tight. And then make sure that the hackle fibers cut backwards a little and just start wrapping that. And 
Again, making sure each wrap is pressed against the last. Give it a few good wraps just like before. And once that's tied down nice and tight, we can cut it off. And then again, we're gonna pull those fibers back and tie them down to create a cone like before. All right, looks great. So we can tie those hackle fibers up to the head and then bring that back down just to make sure we keep those controlled. Now we're gonna turn the jig over and we're gonna tie in our shell. For the shell, I'm using black stretch flex. You can use a scud back material or anything like this. I like stretch flex because it, it's a little stretchy and it's just pure black. But we're just gonna tie that in right on top. Tie it down really tight, just right to where we tied in that hackle. And then for our ribbing, we're gonna tie in a piece of four pound fluorocarbon or monofilament, just your crappie fishing line. And then for the chenille, we're gonna be using this large cactus chenille. This one is black, olive, green color. Has a nice crawfish color for the ones in my area. So we're just gonna tie that in nice and tight so that the butt end goes up to the head. Once you got it where you want it, you can start wrapping that chenille. Just do nice, tight wraps where it's pressed against the last. I like to use the rotary function here just to make sure it's nice and even. And no other materials that we tied in previously get trapped. Just create a nice thick layer of that. And then you can tie that in at the head. Make sure you tie it pretty tight. Since this is a large chenille, it likes to come undone if you don't tie it tight enough. So give it four or five good wraps and then a wrap in front of the chenille. And once you're happy with that, you can cut the chenille. Now we're gonna clean it up just a little bit, get a few wraps in front of the chenille again. Now we're gonna take our stretch flex and stretch it out just right on top of that jig. Make sure it doesn't lean to either side. You just want it right on top straight. And then tie it down tight once you got it in place. Put a wrap of thread in front of the stretch flex and then you can cut that off. And as you can see, that creates a nice shell on top. Now we're gonna do our ribbing. So we're gonna take our monofilament line and just rib that body. It's mostly for the shell, but it also creates a little ribbing between the legs of the craw, which is the chenille. Just make sure you do nice even wraps with that. And this will create a really natural looking ribbing, just like a crawfish. So once you get about four turns of that, you can tie off the mono. Again, tie it off tight so that it doesn't come loose. A wrap in front. And we're gonna clip that off. And now we're gonna whip finish. So do about five or six turn whip finish. Pull it tight and then do another whip finish, five or six turns. This will just make sure everything stays tied down. And now we're gonna cut our thread. For the antenna, we're just gonna pull those straight. You don't wanna pull them tight because then 
the length will be off, but we just want to cut those so that they're extended a little past the claws. Now we're going to use a little brush tool to brush the chenille fibers out, just to create the legs of the craw. And there we have it. That is our crawfish pattern. It's a super natural looking jig that has great action. I really love that shell. It just looks incredible and it fishes even better. So there's a better look at that. This is one of my favorites now. I love it. I've caught a lot of smallmouth and largemouth on it. And anything that'll eat crawfish will eat this as well. As you can see that marbled head with the black and chartreuse really blends well with the body and gives it a super cool look. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, as always, be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.